It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. From the CBS television news staff, Larry Lasseur and George Herman. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Harvey V. Higley, Administrator of Veterans Affairs. Now even these days when wars and the threats of wars jump at us from every headline, an unfortunate irony holds true. It's a fact that when a man returns from war, he's a conquering hero, and it's also a fact that after he's been back for a few years, his former hero worshippers, many of them, regard him as just another tax burden. Now, the Veterans Administrator not only has a vast administrative problem, but he also has to do a public relations job between Congress and the veteran. Now, Mr. Higley, when you took over your job, you were given $4 billion by Congress to uh, do it. Now, has that been enough money? Yes, uh, Mr. Lesseur. If you uh, take into consideration that we were given 200 millions as a supplemental uh, contribution this last session of Congress. You mean to pay the bills that you couldn't pay those the are the previous year? The contractual obligations to those men who have pensions or compensation coming. It's the contract between the government and those men, and of course, it has to be paid. Well, Mr. Higgins, you entered uh, the veterans' post uh, during a period when Congress was very economy-minded. Now, have you been able to save money, or have they been just as generous with you as they were with the previous veterans' administrator? I can't answer uh, about the previous administrators. They have been very fair with us. We, uh, at the present time, we could use some more money, it's true. But I do think they try to give us the money that we need to do our job. Well, that brings up another question, talking about your job. If you have the money and you're doing it, how about the veterans? How do they feel now? For instance, in Korea, I noticed that a great many of the GIs there were very bitter. They felt that they were forgotten men. Now, has your organization been able to make them feel that they're not forgotten, that they're remembered by a grateful country? Well, Mr. Herman, uh, I'm frank to say that I, uh, I haven't seen any evidences of that bitterness since they came back. Now, I would... Uh, venture to guess, however, that when they do come home and they're out of service and they're given these opportunities in education, own a home, and the other benefits that may be involved, particularly if they are disabled or in trouble in some respect, uh, physical trouble, uh, that would certainly make them feel much more kindly if they did in the past have a feeling that they were forgotten men over in Korea. Mm -hmm. Mr. Higley, uh, tomorrow, I think, is going to be the 10th anniversary of the GI Bill of Rights. Now, do you think that bill has been a success, or has a lot of money been wasted? I, I think it has been a great success. I, uh, I'm rather glad you asked that question, and I'd like to answer it in this way. Any law that's put on the books is written to take care of the greatest number of men, in this case, veterans. And uh, as far as words go, they, they do the best job they can to make it fit. However, I don't believe there's a law on the books today that doesn't have at its two extremes either those that do not seem to benefit properly or at the other end, perhaps those who seem to get a benefit to which they're not entitled. Uh, so on the local level, whether it's a matter of education or uh, benefits, pensions, compensation, whatever it may be, hospitalization, we do have the feeling on the part of some people that uh, perhaps veterans are uh, getting a free ride because they know somebody down the street or somebody they're acquainted with who uh, is apparently uh, not entitled as far as they know to what he's getting. I think everyone should realize that laws play the average. And I will say that for the average, the GI Bill of Rights has been of inestimable value to a very large number of veterans, and that this country has gained materially because they had a GI Bill of Rights. Well, now you Mr. have a new law, which is a sort of a 
an offspring of the Bill of Rights, that is the law dealing with the, it's a sort of Bill of Rights for Korean veterans. That's is that right a same law or is that a new improved law which that takes into account? That is virtually the same law except that in some instances it works out a little differently. It, uh, it, the the way it operates is a little bit different, but the men substantially get all of the same benefits. Is it Mr. more efficient, more streamlined? Better, uh, uh, better from an administrative standpoint. That's Strictly, right. of course, under selective service now, about a half a million men are entering the Army every year, entering the armed forces. Now, this means that uh, as far as we can foresee into the future, under the present international situation, we're going to have a nation of increasing number of veterans. And moreover, they are now thinking about a universal military training law, which would take every boy in after the age of 18 for a long period of service. Can we actually afford to go on with the, uh, the benefits that we are giving our veterans? Well, uh, if the number of veterans increase, it's going to cost more money to take care of them. Of course, you understand that as far as the Veterans Administration is concerned, we're only interested in veterans and only wartime veterans, uh, peacetime veterans. If, for instance, the Korea War or whatever it is. Well, the Korean was War declared. is a war, isn't it? It's still, there's an it armistice there. There's concerned. still no peace in Korea, so everyone who is in inducted now That's becomes right. a war veteran. He is a Korean veteran. Uh, as far as we're concerned, the Korean War is going on. And as long as that's true, all of the men who are now serving will be entitled to these benefits. If, however, tomorrow or someday, the president, uh, I presume, would decree, or Congress, that the war shall be considered at an end, then from anybody who went into the service beyond that date would be a peacetime veteran. And we would Mr. not Mr. Higgins, do you think on. that the communists are trying to break this country by refusing to sign a peace treaty <laughs> in Korea so everyone is a war veteran? Well, I think they have a lot of ways of uh, <laughs> trying to break us. So th that may be one of them. Well, how does the war, the war period, is there a cutoff or does the war period run indefinitely? And uh, if there should be an armistice uh, certified so that we would declare that the war in Korea, or whatever you want to call it, is over, does that mean that after a certain length of time, all benefits will cease? Not all benefits, uh, but benefits like your uh, education and training and your uh, loan guarantee and, and tho that type. But of course, the matter of pensions and compensation and hospitalization have to do with the man situated, the veteran, man or woman, that person's situation at any given time, and he does not lose any of his rights. Mm -hmm. if, if it's something that develops in later years, he's still a veteran, he's still entitled to consideration. Mr. Higley, we've heard it said that there are a lot of veterans' hospitals being built since the uh, end of the last war, and everyone knows that at the conclusion of a war, politicians do go in and, and ask for hospitals to be built in their among their constituents. Now, I understand a lot of hospitals are built, but you haven't got the money or the personnel to man them. Is this actually the case? Oh, no, that isn't quite uh, right, Mr. Lesseur. Uh, ho the hospitals which we are now activating were started as a program immediately after World War II. And uh, in fact, we're practically at the end of that program, and we'll end up with 174 hospitals. I, uh, I won't say anything about politicians. I, I might venture to say, however, that unfortunately hospitals were put in poor locations by some hooker crook, and we're finding it extremely difficult to staff them at those hospitals. And in fact, they are also located where you do not have the veterans, where the, where the veteran load does not exist. Well, why are you having this difficulty in staffing these hospitals? Because you don't pay the uh, medical officers whom you would like to get enough to go into a veteran's hospital? Well, there are two reasons. Uh, where we are short of certain types of medical assistance, as for, for instance, psychiatrists. There just are not enough psychiatrists in the country. And uh, it doesn't matter much how much you pay. You can't hire them. You can't find them. Now, the, the doctors are paid uh, somewhat on a scale like your civil service. It is not the same scale, but it, it works in the public law 293, set up uh, how they're to pay, also nurses. And of course, uh, that's all we can pay. And, uh, uh, and that's all right. That's all right, because we've got to take potluck along with everybody else. Uh, you, you know, we, we cannot be in a position where we can take uh, more than our just share. There's got to be competition in it. So all needs for hospital well, speaking care. Speaking of mental cases, Mr. Higley, uh, are there more mental cases among veterans than there are among the rest of the population? No, I'm told by those who uh, 
who really should know that within the same age group, the number of mental cases among non-veterans is just as great as veterans. I'd like to ask you another question about those uh, veterans who served in the, or were actually exposed to com communist brainwashing in the prisoner of war camps in, uh, in North Korea and communist China. Now, are you doing anything specially for those chaps? That is under discussion. Uh, I don't believe that those uh, men are veterans at the present time. Now, they may be, but until the Army or Navy or Marines or, or Air Force discharge them, they are not veterans, so they, we would have nothing to do with them. Uh, there is a considerable discussion uh, among those who might enter that picture to be sure that the job is very well done. And we have, frankly, made the, uh, the suggestion that we be permitted to take that on as our job so that because we probably will have more contact with them than than many others well so I just have a few seconds to ask you a question has modern war like the Korean War in which uh, my colleague George Herman was active so long has modern war resulted in more people becoming completely disabled so that they are forced to be supported by the government I would uh, I would say yes for the reason that, as uh, Mr. Herman pointed out when we were talking uh, before we came in here about his service over there, uh, so many of these men were saved uh, by helicopter service, getting them back from the front lines and all that. They were saved, but unfortunately they will not be able to take their rightful place in society or work. Uh, and so they may be those that we will have to take care of for a long time. Well, that's sad news, but thank you very much for coming here and telling us, Mr. Higley. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lesseur and George Herman. Our distinguished guest was Harvey V. Higley, Administrator of Veterans Affairs. A Longines watch makes the most distinguished gift, for a Longines watch is not alone one of the very finest watches made anywhere in all the world, but equally important, it's the watch of highest prestige. Now consider these beautiful Longines watches for ladies. Here are superb examples of the jeweler's exquisite art. Diamonds where used are of the finest quality. Meticulous hand finishing gives that final touch of perfection. For men, Longines has created a watch for every need and purpose. Waterproof, shock-resistant, automatic watches for rugged service. Handsome dress watches for business and formal wear. Each style with impressive good taste. And every Longines watch, whether for a lady or for a gentleman, is made to the unique Longines standards of excellence, which have won for Longines 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes, 28 gold medals, highest honors for accuracy in fields of precise timing. And yet you may buy or own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as $71.50. And remember that if you pay the price of a Longines, you should insist on getting a Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches.